Yes. <laughs> of course, okay. So good morning, good morning to everybody. And uh, officially we can say that uh, the first, the, the fifth European Conference of RM School uh, project uh, is now open. So um, I'm really happy to be connected with all of you. Um, also, if this year was really difficult here. So um, today we have anyway connection with uh, 19 countries in all the part of Europe. And uh, this is a success by considering all the difficulties uh, due to the COVID pandemic. I hope that all of you are fine. And uh, anyway, we are still together and we have again uh, the chance to share um, what our wonderful schools uh, have developed uh, during this year in the framework of this project. Uh, before starting, I'd like to ask you a little bit of collaboration uh, to avoid the technical problems. So please uh, leave the microphone uh, switch off uh, when you don't have to speak. Uh, so of course, switch on uh, only when you have to give your presentation and please uh, also the speaker uh, switch on uh, their camera because we want to see directly the speakers no? <laughs> uh, when it is your turn. Uh, if you have a question, please use the chat and or raise your hand. Um, by clicking on the top uh, uh, bar um, in the screen and uh, uh, I give uh, uh, the possibility to ask directly or uh, I'm going to read your question. Um, so uh, we can start uh, with the, uh, the uh, presentation and so I try to, to share my screen. Okay. Um, please, uh, Giovanna, give me the possibility to share the screen. I have not at the moment uh, this possibility. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe this I is the boss. Sorry. To stop me. <laughs> okay. And. Um, okay. Yes, uh, perfect. Thank you. OK. Yes, I think now you should see the the screen. Can you confirm uh, confirm me th this? Are you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes, we can see. OK, thank you so much. Uh, so it is possible also to uh, follow uh, this uh, conference by um, uh, by going uh, on the YouTube uh, channel. Here there is the link. OK, uh, at the moment uh, we don't have uh, Sophia Mayer that uh, was supposed to give. Uh, uh, in... Yes, we do. I'm right yes. here. Sophia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, but I I didn't realize that you you were uh, able to join us. Yeah, so, uh, please, uh, Sophia, I, I want to introduce you. Sophia Mayer uh, is the head education project manager at the EIT Raw Materials, but also uh, is a, a very nice person that uh, help uh, us constantly and also support us by giving uh, suggestion and any kind of support uh, that uh, we need. And so um, I leave uh, the, the floor to Sophia that so uh, uh, she can say uh, something uh, to all all of us. Please, Sophia, it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello from Berlin, Germany. My name is Sophia Myers from EIT Raw Materials. Welcome to the fifth European Conference of RM at Schools. This year was not like anything we've experienced before, and it's changed the way we live and work and study and think and relate to each other. 
Um, I know it's been really hard and I want to thank you all for your hard work and dedication to this project. And I wish you so much luck and success in 2021. And I hope you have a, a good luck and fun today as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia. We uh, try to, to do our best, but also for us, this kind of event, totally online, it's really uh, an experiment, we can say, no? because everything is new also for, for us. No? So we hope uh, to do something good, uh, but uh, I ask the, 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 to be patient to uh, all the attendance, no? because uh, yes, we, we are developing this uh, all together. It's the first time also for us. So thank you, thank you so much, Sofia. So I, okay, um, I go on with the, the program. And so now I share again my screen. Okay, you, you see that we have uh, a very uh, uh, busy <laughs> agenda for uh, these two hours of connection. And uh, um, so I don't want it to be long because I I want to leave uh, to leave uh, the floor uh, to to the um, to the student. Okay, and uh, okay. Um, so um, to, uh, this afternoon, uh, many webinars and workshop. Um, were organized and I asked to hold the uh, uh, tutors of these activities uh, to record uh, the webinar if it is possible so we can uh, also um, conserve uh, uh, them in our uh, uh, website. And then, okay. Let me check. OK, uh, before I enter into uh, the discussion, I want to thank you um, absolutely uh, all the organizing committee, um, Giovanna, Renata, uh, Alessandra, Michela, Lorenzo and Hall and uh, the consortium for the availability to uh, to build uh, also this event uh, together. And so I think it's uh, uh, also it also if it is an online event is something that is really European, uh, an European action, as you can see uh, from the uh, program in the afternoon. OK, so thank you to all. Um, only two words about the project, because maybe some uh, attendants are not used uh, um, to, to listen about our project. So RM School is an innovative program to make science education and career in raw material uh, attractive for, for uh, uh, young people. And RM School is one of the two uh, flagship program in the wide society learning segment of EIT raw material. And uh, it, uh, it is based on a very big uh, European consortium uh, composed by uh, 27 partners uh, from uh, uh, 19 countries. Uh, sorry, there is a mistake here in the in the slide, and a lot of uh, schools and companies. This consortium is supported by two two projects, Arema School and Arema School for Easy Country, uh, that uh, started this year, and they can see uh, with a lot of success. And uh, okay. Um, the idea on which this program uh, is based is to propose to schools an active learning by involving students in experiment and in communication activities. So in order to uh, transform the classes into lab, the consortium, the, the two consortium have developed many uh, toolkits um, that can be uh, digital toolkits, but, uh, but uh, essentially lab kits uh, and also serious games. Uh, these toolkits uh, um, has be, have been inserted in learning pathway, exploration and minding, recycling, substitution and circular economy. 
and as regard the methodology that we use uh, in a RAM school program, all the students are introduced into some uh, higher, uh, raw material related topics by an expert from the consortium or by a trained teacher, and then um, uh, are, in, uh, are in involved in uh, some activities, and then they are asked to become young RM ambassadors. That means that they have to to play a role in the knowledge dissemination. So uh, they are he, he asked to create uh, some uh, uh, dissemination product. And if you are curious and if you want to, to see what uh, uh, um, uh, has been developed, you can watch uh, at the gallery uh, page in our um, website. So as you can well imagine um there uh, we have a lot of deviation um in the in the project plan caused by the pandemic uh, uh, um, problem okay so this is only an example of the public event that we were uh, uh, not able to to develop but anyway we have decided anyway to react to this um difficult Difficulties and uh, anyway, we were able to to do something. And also, if you want to have an idea about what our activity, you can um, go on the website on the uh, events and news. Um, so, okay, so. Uh, we try to react. Uh, another information that I want to share with you is about the new website of, uh, of the consortium. Uh, it is uh, uh, still uh, under construction, but uh, we can uh, share uh, now some uh, new info. And uh, this uh, will be the home page. And uh, uh, in the new website, you you will find some um, section devoted to the different activities of the project, such as uh, the teaching resources. In the teaching resource, af uh, after the teaching resources, you can find a young RM ambassador in action section where you can learn about uh, our uh, learning path and find uh, many contents. As regard uh, the page uh, focus on toolkits, uh, you will find uh, like a table uh, that summarize uh, all the uh, um, tools uh, that are available to schools and uh, uh, then you can find uh, all the um, supporting material if you want to replicate uh, the experiment or the activities. And then if uh, you go on the student in action uh, page, you will find also the photos uh, and the galleries uh, um, uh, regarding uh, this event, but also the, the events uh, developed in the past. And uh, OK, um, I don't want to uh, spend uh, more time about speaking, uh, speaking about the problem that we had, but I, I want to look uh, at the new here. And uh, so uh, I want to be uh, focused on the future. So um, uh, mm, we have uh, a lot of plans for the ne uh, for the next year. Um, of course, we are not sure uh, <laughs> that we uh, were able to do everything, but we hope to do, to do at least something. So I leave the floor to Marlieke uh, from Vetsus uh, in Netherlands, uh, because uh, I'd like that Mar Marlieke present you um, their initiative for the next September. Marlieke, are you Hello. connected? Hello. Yes, please. I am. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Really nice to see with how many we are right now, like over 100. That's really awesome. Um, thank you, Armida, for this nice uh, presentation. And uh, I will quickly tell you guys about an event that we are planning to, uh, to do next year in September, at the end of September, because we are organizing an international science fair next year. Um, 
we hope we can do it uh, in real life, in person, so not uh, digital, but we have to see. Um, it will be a five day program. Uh, so it's even a, a day more than the last time, because last time in 2018, we had four days. And the first day, uh, when you guys all arrive, um, we will do some games so we can connect with each other and get to know each other. And then uh, on the second day, uh, we will uh, show you around in WebSets. We will do some nice workshops and uh, teach you about the, the research we do. And on day three, uh, we will have the science fair itself, as you can see on the picture in the flyer. Um, so then you guys will present your work and in the evening we will have the award ceremony. It will be really chic and you guys will have all nice dresses, etc. So it will be really nice. Um, and then day four, it will be an island adventure. So we will go to one of the islands of the Netherlands and we will do some uh, water sports and just have some fun activities so we can connect more. And then on day five, there will be the departure. So then you guys will be leaving home with hopefully a lot of nice experiences and some nice new contacts with other youngsters from all over Europe. So yeah, we were really looking forward to it and we really hope that you guys would like to uh, join. And if you are interested, you can always contact me or contact your uh, partner of the consortium. And I will also spread around this flyer so you guys will have more information. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Armida, you have uh, I Armida. can hear you, Armida. <laughs> you have the microphone off. Yes. Okay. okay, sorry. Uh, yes, I want to add that uh, the last the last uh, time that uh, Vetsus organized this wonderful initiative was a really a success from uh, the scientific point of view, but also for uh, 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 stay together to know each other and to share also our different culture no? between countries. Yes. So I think it's a great opportunity. Thank you so much, Marlieke. Thank you. And uh, OK, now uh, I'd like to, to leave uh, the floor to uh, Natalia. Natalia, are you connected? Yes. Yes. Uh, OK, yes. Natalia, uh, um, she's from Krakow, from uh, Poland. And uh, also uh, her and uh, uh, her team um, is organizing a wonderful initiative for the next year. Please, Natalia. Thank you. I, I think you were able to see my screen. Yes. Hopefully. Great. So uh, thank you very much, Amida, for a wonderful introduction and congratulations to entire C and our team for, for organization and for lovely support uh, and for all activities which you organize for students despite the COVID. So as Armida mentioned, I'm Natalia, they represent the AGH University, the Raw Materials at School project partner, and together with my colleagues, we prepared today the presentation on our future plans for 2021. Uh, we have been talking today about the past, but I think in the face of COVID, everybody is curious about the future also. Uh, so briefly, I will deal with the topic of International Summer Camp, which is planned to organize in the next year. So first I put a question, what? So International Summer Camp is four days learning journey program along the uh, raw materials value chain. And the event is planned for the next year, as it was mentioned before, in the city of Krakow. Krakow is the former capital of Poland. Uh, and I think it's also worth to emphasizing that summer school is dedicated for students who are between 10 to 19 years old. Um, but therefore, as a main plus of attendance in international summer camp, I think it's the possibility to conduct an international mobility. Of course, meet a new friends, the new culture, international peers, and I think also acquire some new knowledge and perceive some, some challenges in diverse and interdisciplinary teams. Uh, but what is the structure of International Summer Camp, briefly? Uh, so first, of course, the insights from the leading experts from industry and academia. In addition, we have a plan to organize some uh, experimental activities, which I think are widely known by our conference our participants. And finally, that the trip to a mine or to some company would be organized. So uh, I think it uh, presents uh, the real challenges facing the world in the raw materials sector. 
so just a little bit more about the structure. The first day is, of course, an Arriva one. We have some social program, of course. The second day is a kind of introduction. We have a plan to organize some team building, some expert talks toolkit first. The third day would be the field trip, as I mentioned before, and the fourth day is, of course, the departure one. Um, in a view of COVID situation, of course, we have prepared some plan B and scenario which correspond to the situation of global pandemic. But uh, briefly, we will move all activities to online, but uh, but I'm, I'm sure and I strongly believe that it will be also a successful experience for our, for our ambassadors. Uh, so that's it when it comes uh, to aspect related to the to the summer camp. Uh, but today I would like to invite everyone to Krakow, the former capital of Poland, which is currently has about one million uh, citizens, two hundred thousand students, twelve tourists, tw twelve million tourists per year, and of course this is uh, is a center of business, culture, and science. And I'm convinced that you will have a perfect time here, and this experience will, will remain in your memory for a long time. Here's a few slots from Krakow. It's mostly on UNESCO site. I think it's one of the most beautiful city in Europe. Uh, and uh, please follow us on social media and our new website. And today we are waiting for you in Krakow. And thank you very much, Armida. <laughs> and uh, the stage is yours now. Thank you so much. Oh, Natalia, you are wonderful. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you also for invite, uh, invite us uh, to your wonderful uh, city uh, because uh, it's, I know I never I never been there, but I know that is really a wonderful, a wonderful city that uh, uh, deserve uh, absolutely a, a trip. A trip. Okay. Yes. Um, See you in the next year. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalia. And um, okay, we uh, the next year we are going to organize also other uh, international activities uh, if uh, we are lucky. <laughs> We were able to organize also a wonderful event in Hannover with the collaboration with the Clausthal University and another summer uh, camp in Lisbon with the collaboration with the University in Lisbon. But anyway, we don't want to uh, to share everything now, no, because we want that you um, can follow us during the, the next month. OK, now is the time for sharing uh, the floor with our wonderful students. And uh, in this uh, trip, we have uh, the support of Marco Castellazzi. Marco is a TV author and presenter at the uh, Radio Televisione Italiana, is the, the national TV, and uh, he, he is an expert in science uh, communi communication, and also we can say it's a friend that uh, follows us uh, since uh, um, um, many years. So thank you again to be with us. I leave the microphone, uh, the floor to, to Marco, and so so please uh, switch on your camera with, because we want to see you. <laughs> I suppose my camera is already switched on. Okay. Okay. Thank you much, and uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thank you very much to invite me in uh, this um, operation. I think uh, you are doing uh, a wonderful uh, job. Uh, you, I mean the organization and the students also you know better than me that you are working for the future. And uh, your commitment uh, for me is very important. And for re this reason, I accepted the invite of Armida. But uh, you know the stars are the students today. So let's talk directly to them. First, uh, I have to introduce uh, Miss Clutch Unit uh, is it yes. correct? Yes, the, the first group is from Hungary. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Um, so we uh, ask to um, Giovanna to share okay, the video and then we speak directly with uh, this uh, nice uh, team. Okay, 
Thank you, Giovanna. Giovanna, we can, we can see, we can uh, hear. Here. It's a problem because uh, before works and now I try <laughs> something. Uh, okay. Uh, To now, to okay, it works. I restart all. Okay, okay. perfect. Welcome, everybody. We are the Agate. We came from Sharva from Kiln Grammar School, where we had the chance to do our researches in a high tech bio laboratory with Agnit. It's a quite useful material and we are going to do some researches uh, in connection with it. And uh, the motto of our researches is to uh, get to know and use the material around you. Uh, today we are here in the high-tech laboratory. We are going to analyze the physics, the biology and the chemistry of algae. It is our equipment that we are using. For example, there's a camera microscope. pH measuring. We put some powder into a test tube. Then we added water and mixed it together. We put a pH test paper into the solution. Its pH is A. Examining with camera microscope. We examined a huge piece of agonite with a camera microscope. We were able to see the layers of the stone and found the leaf impression. This is the latest innovation, the alginate analyzing box. It's a fantastic um, invention because you can experiment and learn about alginate. Do you know what alginate is? I will show you. So, here you can uh, read about the formation, discovery and use of alginate. This is a geographical study uh, where you can find out what alginate is like inside and out. A chemical um, experiment with two test tubes for pH and uh, potassium carbonate content. And uh, this is a biological uh, experiment where we plant a plant and um, experience how much uh, faster it grows in soil mixed with alginate. It's fantastic! Get a box too! Yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> Anna. Okay, are you connected? Please switch on the camera. We want to see you directly. Marco, they are very shame. <laughs> see you guys. Hello, Anna. Hello, David. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you very much for your job. I appreciate very much your enthusiasm and passion that uh, you know are uh, the most important engine to to draw all uh, the our attention and uh, to project as uh, to launch us uh, in the future. So, how long did you did you uh, did you take to 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 develop this box? Um, it took uh, quite a long time. We experienced with Arginate uh, for 
around the moons. And uh, after our experiments, we planned and constructed uh, our box. Ah, and um, it's already available? Uh, no, it's just a prototype. We want to improve it and uh, change some of the materials and uh, things like that. Anna, want to say something? Anna, are you connected? Yes. Uh, yes. I, I, I saw oh. you want to say something <laughs> it, or not. Yes. <laughs> Anna? So, how, how did you organize your work, uh, guys? Um, uh, you mean what uh, each of us did in the project? Yes, yeah. yes, ex exactly. Uh, so, I uh, did the researches with Alginite, uh, as it is shown in the video, and uh, David and Anna, they constructed the box and uh, made the um, description of it. Perfect. Where do you get the idea to work uh, on Alginate? Uh, we are quite lucky because there's a huge alganite mine next to our town. So we wanted to use the resources near our home. So it was the idea that we use alganite because it's quite cheap where we live. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Sure. Marco, Marco, this is a really a sustainable idea. <laughs> absolutely, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. And also a short thing. Yes. So congratulations, guys. I think uh, you realize a very, very nice uh, tool that can be also useful for other uh, schools. So uh, we are the first that we want to receive your box. Eh? <laughs> we are we are booking for for this box eh? because I want to learn about this material because I'm a chemist and so I don't know anything about uh, minerals uh, and uh, uh, other materials. So I need to learn also. So thank you. Thank you again. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Guys. Okay, so uh, now uh, is the turn of the uh, team from Austria. Okay, uh, from Austria. Yeah, they will tell us about production, importance, and possible use of hydrogen. Is it correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This this uh, team was tutored by the Mull uh, University of Leoben, and so now we are to wait for for watching the, their video. Let's summarize. Hydrogen will be an important material for future technologies and thus become a key element within the next years and decades. Hydrogen enables the coupling of the important sectors electricity, gas and heat and consequently enables the storage of renewable electric energy at a massive scale. Thus, it will be a valuable contribution for a climate neutral mobility and industrial production. Today, most of the hydrogen is produced by steam methane reforming with a remarkable amount of CO2 emissions. Water electrolysis can produce hydrogen climate neutral if the required electric energy can be supplied from renewable resources. However, the enormous energy requirement for future hydrogen production by electrolysis can only be provided as renewable energy to a little extent. Depending on the local electric energy mix, as a result, this hydrogen will also contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. An alternative process technology for the production of hydrogen is methane pyrolysis. Here, a considerably lower specific energy is required. 
Pyrolysis can therefore be seen as a bridging technology to supply hydrogen within the next decades. The carbon from methane will not be released as CO2, but converted to solid carbon, another valuable product. Carbon has numerous applications. Energy storage for electrical energy or hydrogen, electrodes, in construction materials for sustainable structures, and numerous applications in agriculture. Consequently, a reduction of the hydrogen production costs can be realized by the valorization of the carbon product. Many researchers around the globe work to further develop and realize methane pyrolysis at an industrial scale. The team led by the Montana Universität Leoben intends to implement technologies that guarantee a comprehensive, sustainable and valuable utilization of hydrogen and carbon. Besides the technical development of the process technology, economic and ecologic considerations for the methane pyrolysis are additionally in the center of interest. Furthermore, other processes for the production of hydrogen will be evaluated in a life cycle assessment in order to assist decision makers and guarantee the implementation of the right technology for the future demand of hydrogen with respect to regional and ecological requirements. Nice job. Yes. Do we have Annika and... Oh, here they are. Hello. Hello, girls. Hi. Uh, switch on the camera. No, I are think... We, our camera is on. Ah, okay. I, I can see them. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm always interested in, in the how you get the idea, why your uh, why you choose uh, hydrogen as a subject of your research. Um, we chose it because we had the opportunity to work with the Montana University of Leuven. And the idea of the video to make it like that, we had ourselves. Wow. <laughs> it's a nice idea, girls. <laughs> really nice. Do you do you think you will uh, continue uh, working on this uh, topic? Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and okay, if you want to share with us some impression, okay, about uh, the the work that you did in the last uh, month okay what what uh, what is the the part of your work that uh, you like it more the best part of of this work of this work um, if you have to choose i think it was i'm um, painting all the pictures and doing the research <laughs> and also <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, what what kind of uh, of schools are are you attending? W um, it's a technical school. Is a scientific uh, school? No, it's just a secondary school. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Secondary school. I, I know you are young. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, do you want to share? other impression or comment uh, with with us uh, or uh, yes um so no <laughs> okay no problem uh, if uh, if anybody from the consortium want to to ask something please uh, write on the chat okay yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, girls, uh, we love your work now because it's really creative. And also you you uh, were focused on a topic that now is strategic for Europe now because hydrogen um, is important for the transition toward a decarbonization future. Okay, <laughs> so, so, okay, thank you, I think. Uh, Okay, uh, it's uh, there is in the chat uh, there is uh, written that is uh, the birthday today, no? Uh, yes. So you uh, today is is it your birthday? No? <laughs> oh, we can we can uh, we can sing all together. <laughs> Happy.
happy, happy, happy birthday, eh? Thank you. In an European way, no? we, we wish you all the best for, for, uh, for the present and for the future, okay? <laughs> Okay, so thank you, thank you again, girls. Okay, yes, we can go on, Marco. Eh? Now we have a team from Italy. Okay, Instituto di Istruzione Superiore Mario Arana from Bologna, and they develop a calendar on critical raw materials. Let's see this calendar. Yes. <laughs> Uh, during uh, the lockdown of March, our chemistry teacher proposed us to take a part to an European project of TNR. Working in groups uh, wasn't easy because uh, we couldn't uh, physically meet. It was a way to stay uh, in touch with my friends and uh, to distract myself from the tiring uh, situation of the lockdown. It has been difficult to realize this project because of the lockdown during this pandemic. So we decided to make a video call on Google Meet. At the end, I was pleased to carry out this project because I found it interesting. It made me aware of the importance of the raw materials that are running out. Moreover, it gave me an occasion to interact more with my classmates. We students have done everything uh, possible to adapt the situation. I felt very lonely, but thanks to technology, during the scheduled production uh, between one call and another, uh, I have been uh, able to feel uh, closer to my teammates and uh, to reality. <laughs> In each group we divided the tasks to do. We often call each other to, uh, to agree about the evolution of the work. At the end, we managed to finish the, the part of the schedule who we had to work on. Carrying out the project during the lockdown made me feel a little closer to my classmates with the whom we exchange opinions and ideas on the classroom. I found this project very challenging because it gave me the opportunity to collaborate with my schoolmates and because I got a lot of important knowledge. At the beginning, we were not expert in using applications like Meet. It was difficult to work in pairs, but then with a little effort, anything is possible. Uh, the project has been interesting and uh, it gave us the opportunity to learn a lot about uh, out. I personally found it uh, tiring to spend so many hours online and uh, I prefer to work uh, in a group with my schoolmates in person. Well, I think this is a, a wonderful experiment because uh, reality as is for forcing us uh, to develop a new way of uh, working and uh, to stay together. Is there anybody from uh, uh, Detroit Mayor? Huh? From, uh, from, yes, uh, I, I, oh, please. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, where are you? <laughs> Alexia. Yes, I'm here. 
And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Daniela. So, girls, you know, maybe this is the first time we are forced to use uh, so hardly the these uh, platforms of communication. And uh, you know, it's not possible. The last uh, last. Uh, that's the guy is who talk. I say he prefers to work uh, in group with other people. But uh, maybe this is a way to work together. How did you felt working in this way? Um, to be honest, uh, um, despite the pandemic, it was uh, not so difficult to find the information we needed. We still had all the tools uh, to be able to complete our research. Uh, and on the internet anyway, you can find much information, but we had to be sure of their authenticity. So we had used the only reliable websites which provide the certified sources. Yes, it's, it's really important what, what you have considered. Yes, it's important when you are looking for information in Internet, you, uh, you, you have to be able to select because in the Internet you can find everything, <laughs> not only the truth. Yes, the truth. I, OK, and uh, uh, I love this, uh, we can say, simple way to share your uh, impression about this difficult period and also uh, I appreciated very much the um, your uh, your effort in trying to developing something together I think it's it's really a important uh, to stay together um, also we are everyone in our home okay and uh, uh, there are also uh, now connected the other uh, um, your uh, classmates okay yes. they want to to say something about this experience uh, yes as um, alessia said it was not so difficult to find the information as the fact of working away from one uh, from one partner it was a disappointed to have to see each other on a video call rather than meet in the afternoon. And this was what made it difficult to make the calendar. But despite everything, it was a really good experience and we learn a lot of new things. Yes. Yes, I want to, to tell uh, also to the other student because now I don't know if uh, I think there are students also from many countries that in Italy uh, the pandemic co constrained all of us to close the schools at the end of February. So the schools were closed from the last week of February until uh, June, until September, okay, when we reopened. So it was really difficult for these uh, nice uh, young people, no? To keep going, studying, and stay together. Uh, so it was it was quite a difficult period. Um, okay, uh, if anybody want to ask, let me check the chat. Uh, no? Okay, so uh, I want to thank you, you and uh, your teacher, your school, uh, for for uh, your effort. And uh, okay, we wish you all the best. Okay, thank you very much. Ah, okay, Marco, Marco wants to say something. That uh, you have the opportunity to understand two important things. One, the way to choose uh, the reliability of uh, information. And the second uh, is to stay together even though we are separate. And uh, this uh, will be useful also in future. You know, research, uh, it's a team uh, work. Uh, and uh, maybe in this way, it's possible to, it will be possible to do more work together even though we are not uh, together uh, physically. Thank you, girls. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Now is the turn of the team from uh, Poland. Ah, so we can go to see Krakow. Yes. <laughs> and directly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Yes. 
Uh, I ask uh, to everybody to switch off the microphone so the, the sound is better. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Greetings from Poland. Our names are Michael, Veronica, Julia, and Peter, and we're students from St. Gianna Brettomola School in Krakow. We are involved in raw materials at school projects. We tested the topics which were prepared by AGH during the online meetings. We're more than happy to be here, especially that the platform of our school was Italian. We are a group of students passionate about learning languages, geography, environment, and ecology, science, and technology. And we joined this project to become a raw materials ambassador among our friends at school. So what we have done? A little bit of theory and a lot of practice. Our school participate in online lessons about waste management, and which were prepared by AGH. We learned how we should manage and segregate waste. We also learned how we should, uh, how important it is, and what actions uh, should be taken to give many things their second life. The, during the workshop, we sort a test on the waste hierarchy. We had a homework where we had been estimated about the amount of waste in our houses. The results were presented in our white card. Whole family was involved. As a support tool, we used, for example, Kahoot test and work card. Another activity was to watch an education film. In the movie, we get to know the technological process of using the steamworks. We also learn the concept of circular economy and the ways of using the slack. In addition, we are able to to test the VR technology and technical in technical museum. It shows us the, the dimension of digitalization in mining. And some extra activities. As an extra activity, we had an opportunity to participate in the research night. We could watch a film about the direction for the reclamation and the digitalization of post-industrial areas. Then we solved the, the test on this subject. We think it is very interesting educational tool. To conclude, the adventure with raw materials at school projects like the COVID situation. It, and it shows us the, the other kind of um, education possibilities. So we are very happy to be here today with all of you. See you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, bye, bye. We also are very happy to see your job, guys. Yes. Okay, great, uh, greetings from Poland. It's really nice to be here. Uh, we're here for the second time. Uh, well, our school, which is a primary school in Poland, and these are uh, the eighth grade students. So really young people representing um, Poland here uh, during the conference. Uh, once again, it's really nice and it's an honor to be here uh, with you for the second time. <laughs> yes, uh, also, also for us, eh? also for us. <laughs> um, and we're really proud of our students because they are so young and really the presenta representation today, oh, today and last year I think was amazing and they did a really good job. Okay. Uh, yes, um, okay, but... Um, we have uh, here also some of also some uh, of your student uh, or no you yes the, yes the students are here yes i'm their english teacher and uh, they are here at the conference as well yes they're listening okay. okay but switch on the camera so we can see you please if you have the camera <laughs> okay so stu students can you turn on your cameras please switch on your cameras but, but also you also you yes teacher. yes i'm trying to, i'm trying to do that i'm sorry i forgot hello 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 
Oh, it's from Poland. <laughs> yes. It's, it's another thing so to look at uh, the eyes of another person. Yes, yes, yes. Sure, but I forgot. I forgot to be on the thing <laughs> no, uh, yeah, with all this technology and stuff. Uh, okay, it's, uh, I, I forget not only to switch on the camera, but <laughs> things. But anyway, <laughs> and, I and appreciated your approach. It's better to do with uh, when you when you when you say small theory and a lot of practice because i think that doing things uh, it's more um, it's very much better to understand and uh, to feel concept inside what was uh, uh, the thing that uh, enjoyed you better to do uh, well, what I think. Of course, uh, I think. Uh, well, if I may, if I may say on behalf of of the students, I think that they uh, always enjoy more practice. So during the workshops that were organized in our school, uh, I could see them participating more actively during the second part, which was this active part, and they were really well prepared uh, because they had uh, they had some homework to do at home. They had to prepare uh, some data related to uh, segregating mm, their waste. They were really well prepared. Uh, they did some research and there was also some family work involved. Uh, and um, and that was that was fun. So this second part was fun. And uh, as you said, practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> More important. I want to ask to the to the two students I see on camera. Hi, hi guys. Hi guys. Hey. Hey. Do, do you usually segregate your waste in your home? Mm, yes, I think uh, we um, mm, we should segregate all of uh, our waste and it's mm, really mm, really important, I think. Mino, yes, yes. Yeah? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, correct. And do you you do you do it daily in your in your uh, in your life during the year? Uh, sorry, can you repeat, please? Yes. If if uh, if you do daily this with your waste at your home. Every day, you 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 select the waste, or it's uh, only only once. Uh, once a week. <laughs> it's an habit. Are you used to do this? Is an habit or no? Or your teacher or your parents say you have to do. <laughs> yeah, Amida, because uh, Michal and Piotr, they are the Radek's son and uh, Radek is working on waste management. So ah, they have to... Okay, <laughs> but we are working. <laughs> No, I think that they must do it every day. Yes, absolutely. They absolutely. They are better than me, of course. <laughs> only yes, experts. Yes, experts on the field. Very well, very well. And uh, when you do something, knowing exactly the reason, it's uh, you have a reason more to do it better. Yes, you have the motivation. Uh, you are strong in yes. motivation. But, yes. but you know, you know, with such with such a background, I think that they're really perfect ambassadors. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, but but so you you were able to involve uh, also some friends in this uh, uh, waste uh, uh, not not collection, but this this habit uh, regarding waste. You you promote this action also in your class in your school. Yes, yes. We have uh, all of class uh, have to segregate waste uh, of uh, all day week. Wow, great! You are really a, an ambassador eh, of a random yeah. school. <laughs> great. And, and also for the sweets you wear in the video, <laughs> perfect. As ambassadors. <laughs> yes. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you to your teacher too. 
Thank yes. you, Mogos. You're welcome. I'm really glad to be here for the second time. Yes, because yes, uh, well, um, we, uh, we are waiting for you also for the next year. No. So yes, please. yes, yes. I was uh, yes, I was with my students last year in Bologna, but well, this year we can participate only online, which is yes. a shame because it was really nice to come and uh, meet all of you. Yeah, we we hope to be able to to do um again and and better than the, in the past uh, for the next year we hope we need to to hope this yes exactly <laughs> okay so thank you thank you guys thank you to thank hope. you bye 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 now is time for another group from hungary okay um from uh, okay, supported from uh, Miskolc University. They are talking about raw material sterilized. Yes. Hello everyone, we are Iman and Kitty and we are the sci-fi players. This is our main video about the sterilized this brick. The main material of this brick is sterilized, which is a very useful raw material and Hungary is one of the biggest miners in Europe and even in the world. This raw material has a low density, completely environmentally friendly. Uh, it is a good thermal insulator and uh, has a neutral pH. But what gives perlite these special properties? Perlite has a special uh, feature. If we heat the perlite about 1000 degrees of Celsius, uh, the water which the perlite contains uh, transforms into steam and that steam pops up the perlite like a popcorn. So it will be uh, a very low weight and a very good heat insulator, uh, which we used uh, making this brick. Um, but the perlite uh, doesn't have a strong structure, so we had to search for a binder for the perlite. And that was uh, the geopolymer. Our ge geopolymer stands of soap from power plants and a special uh, binder liquid which has a secret formula we can't tell you about. Um, but after we had our material, uh, the geopolymer perlite, uh, we could design this brick with 3D programs. Uh, we designed the manufacturing of this perlite brick. And um, we added a second feature, which is the self-locking form. Uh, the self-locking form is like the Lego. So you don't need any binder for it. You can put the bricks on themselves and you have a wall very, very easily. So you can build a full house uh, on your own. And what can we use this material kit? First of all, mostly we designed this uh, brick, the construction of one level houses, but it, uh, it have a high compressive strength, so we can easily build uh, higher buildings. As you can see, uh, we can use this brick for anything, uh, any buildings, and I think this is one of the best, best building materials in the whole industry. And I think it can innovate uh, the building companies and it can innovate uh, the whole building industry. And I think, I hope in the future, uh, we can make this uh, a real product, uh, an affordable, cheap, uh, environmentally friendly, uh, really useful uh, building material. And we can more easily build our own houses. Very interesting. Yes, I think they are future engineering. <laughs> Guys, switch on the camera. Yes, it is Ivan. Hello, welcome from Hungary. Hello, hello. Waiting for yeah. Maria. Okay, also. Your your friend is it connected or no? I think uh, she's connected, but I don't know where she is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm connected. Oh, okay. Uh, there she is. 
crashes. Okay. Congratulations. Eh? Congratulations for your job. Have Thank you, you guys much. To, to build maybe some building in scale with your uh, for light um, bricks? Uh, we haven't done that because we only have uh, smaller prototypes yeah. on, the, on the scale one to five, but uh, sometimes we want to. But making uh, bigger bricks of this material is way more complicated than the prototypes because of uh, the engineering of the process is uh, much harder. Yes, but, uh, we want, but we want to, we want to. Yes. Step by step. Yes. And Ivan, when, um, where did you learn about the use of this program? You use also a like a professional design program, if I have understood. Uh, uh, it's, ah. not, it's not a professional program, ah, it's okay. called the Blender. It's a simple 3D program we use uh, for designing this. Ah, okay. So it, was, it was not difficult for you. Uh, it wasn't difficult. It was all about measurements. Ah, okay, okay. And uh, so, you do you want to share some uh, comment about this experience, about your uh, uh, the participation to this project? Uh, I want to say thank you uh, for organizing this, and uh, thank you for we can present our work uh, on this platform and I think it was really exciting because we started this job uh, last year with the examining of Perlite. Uh, we had a presentation on the previous uh, conference of raw materials at schools about Perlite and uh, it is likely to see how we can improve our job, how we can improve our, um, our projects. So it's a really great experience, I think. Yes, I think you are experiencing uh, what it means uh, to do research, starting yes. from the idea and then developing something step by step. And so you you think that you can improve, you can think bigger. And uh, so I think a very good job, guys. Thank you very yes. much. <laughs> What have you learned from this experience? Maybe even uh, Maybe. I think uh, we learned. I would like to hear. Uh, do you hear us, Kitty? <laughs> I hear him. I hear him. All right. Thank you, Kitty. What have you learned from this experience? Um, we learned a lot of uh, good uh, properties from Perlite and uh, we learned that people always have to develop and uh, discover new things because uh, well, we have to do a lot of research about our world and I think it is a very very um was it nice yes. to work in a group to work together yes of course was it nice experience yes. yes yes okay okay thank you thank you so much okay thank you very much for, for uh, keep going and working uh, in this field eh? okay so thank you also to your teacher that involve uh, you in this project okay thank you so, very much okay thank you guys thank you. <laughs> thank you. bye uh, yes we have to remember that behind uh, these guys there are enlightened teachers and uh, i want to thank you all for this job because uh, they are making our, our future and uh, thanks to their job our future we hope will be better and uh, now they are behind the scenes and it's important we see the students and so and everything. But uh, I think that uh, one of the most uh, 
important tribute as uh, for the for the teachers and uh, for the people like you also that are, are organizing organizing this kind of uh, let's say a challenge. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, let's uh, keep going uh, with the new group. Okay, this time is from Austria. Austria. Okay, another group from Austrian uh, that tutored by the Mull University of Leoben. Microphone off. Okay. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we want to present our project from the ideas to innovative polymer products based on renewable or recycled raw materials. Our environment is the basis of life for all of us and for the next generations. It's up to us to take care of our natural resources to preserve the environment for the future. That's why we try to produce environmentally friendly products with green chemistry in our science lessons. Our idea was to reduce packaging waste when buying a box of chocolates and to produce eco-friendly products for this presentation. Our first products were eatable balls. Our idea was to reduce plastic waste for chocolate boxes. We heated the dough for some minutes till our first prototypes were ready. They tasted really good. Then we started a milk cuisine plastic project to produce degradable bowls and gift tags. We heated milk and added vinegar to get casein. We wanted to wrap the chocolates in a foil, so we produced biodegradable starch foils. For the chocolate boxes, we produced self-made paper to make boxes we needed a glue, so we produced different kinds of glues, biodegradable, such as a dextrin glue by heating up starch and continuously stirring it until it turns slightly brown, a starch glue by using corn or potato starch, a polyvinyl alcohol glue by heating up a PVA solution until we got a clear and viscous liquid, a casein glue by using low fat quark and sodium hydroxide. Other types of glues we produced from recycled material. We made a glue from styrofoam by dissolving it in acyl acetate and a glue from old ping pong balls, which we dissolved in acetone. Here you can see all of our green packaging products. We had to write all the test protocols with our school produce, but how should we clean our keyboards after our work? We had the idea of to produce slime. Our next attempt was to produce slime with poor flour, water and a highly diluted Warwick solution. This pro product was really great to play with and it could be used as a keyboard cleaner. And for this presentation, we need a school sign for the table. So we asked our informatics teacher if he could print one with a 3D printer. But we tried the synthesis of PLA. PLA is the second most important bioplastic of the world and the most widely used plastic filament material in 3D printing. Of course, we only produced the prototype. This design was printed with professional filaments. What's the science behind these different experiments? In this presentation, the time is too short to answer the question. But if you want to know it, just write an email to us. Perfect presentation. So they prepare the product and also the, the design the packaging of the product. A complete, a complete. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, project. Eh? Okay, yeah. here we have the, the the student or teacher of this group. We have uh, anybody of you connected? No. 
So many. Yes. <laughs> Maria Elena, uh, do you want to say something about uh, this group? Are you connected? Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh. Okay, we are we are happy to see you. Okay, so please uh, share with us uh, some comments about this experience. Uh, hmm? Okay. Um, yes. Um, yes. So I think I had the idea to join the competition. So we wanted to make. Let's try again. Uh, we, we had some uh, technical problems because we're in one room uh, now, but I think we we start again. OK, okay no problem. OK. Oh. Magdalena. So, OK. Um, can you hear us? Yes, perfectly. OK, we had some problems now because we have uh, five PCs in one room and so it started a high noise. But yeah, yeah. my pupils will come to my PC now, OK? Yes. So um, you asked for comments, I think, and they will come now, uh, one person to and one person again, OK? <laughs> so I, I leave now and the students come. <laughs> Okay, perfect. <laughs> Magdalena, which part of the project did you like more? Um, I really liked the starch foil because um, I also went to, to school after the lessons we have to go. So on, on the, in the afternoon and we produced many uh, starch foils out of um, uh, potato starch and other stuff and potatoes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, you can do the keep going speaking, not to not be worried. <laughs> yeah, and I also uh, like making the test with the um, glues. We we really took two hours to make different glues and then we tested them out if they um, stick together and uh, it was really good on plastic, but we had plastic. Uh, we had problems to stick plastic to plastic. Yeah. 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 You have, you will still have to work on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you're, and, uh, you're in a yeah. good way. How many of you were involved in this project? Um, we were six people. Six people. Okay. Oh. And uh, did you? Have some problem to manage the group, some discussion, or everything was uh, uh, always in line. Okay, or everything was great. great. Was great. Yeah. Okay, we want to see all. Okay, please. Oh, <laughs> it's nice to see you. Eh? We hope the next year to have uh, all of you in uh, Bologna, in Italy. No, so thank you. Okay, I think. Uh, Marco, do you want to ask something more? Or uh... I to say congratulations. And also they give me they gave me a wonderful idea on how to clean my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, because I never I never thought about this solution and I appreciate it very much. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Amina, Amina, yes. may I say something? Ah, okay, Beati, Beati, please, please uh, speak. Uh, folks, folks, it was just wonderful. You know, I'm working uh, <laughs> at the, uh, I think it's the largest um, center for adhesive bonding technology and research in Bremen. And what I, what I just, I mean, what I just saw was amazing. And Amida, 
we have to invite them to the talent RM at schools next year. You know, we can do it. I, I now got the permission. We can do it because you have to continue your work. You could use everything you've uh, experienced so far and all the I mean, uh, experiments and you could use it, for example, to create fiber reinforced materials, biodegradable ones. And it's I mean, really amazing, amazing, amazing. And congratulations. Absolutely. Yes, I'm agreeing. Thank you. Thank you. And your teachers. Great job. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you to Hall and also to Beate for the contribution. Okay. Now we have to go on with the agenda. Okay. Bye. Bye, girls. Bye. Let's go in Hungary. Yes, uh, exactly. We jump in Hungary. <laughs> yes, a team from Page. Page. Okay. They have uh, realized a, a work focused on circular economy. This must be the future. Yeah. It's supposed to be the present or today. We have to work a lot of it on it. Hello. In this video, we would like to present our chosen material, which is wood chips. We have chosen wood chips because in the industry, it is a base accumulating in large quantities that is for easily available. We built a metal frame for the culture, which gave the basis of your device, the homemade press machine. After this, we constructed the wooden frame, which gave shape of the press material. We tried to enlarge the thermal insulation capabilities of our material. Thus, we added multiple additives to the wood chip. First, we made a referential slab, which only contains sawdust and water. Unfortunately, it wasn't solid enough to use in large quantities in the construction industry. First additive we tried was wallpaper paste, as it is a natural based adhesive. First, we added water to the wallpaper paste, then we mixed it with the wet sawdust. The second additive we thought of was polystyrene. Although it is not a natural material, we figured that we will use this polystyrene waste from construction sites, thereby finding a way to recycle polystyrene. The last additive we chose was cement. The decision was based on the fact that the solidity of the cement can hold slab together to well. We have put the finished slabs through three tests. In the first experiment, the reference material had difficulty withstanding the heat. In 1 minute and 34 seconds, the slab surface already doubled the room's temperature. The wallpaper adhesive sheet only increased by 1 Celsius after 2 minutes, making it a good thermal insulator. The polystyrene sheet warmed up in just 34 seconds and starts burning. It turned out to be a bad thermal insulator. It's also flammable. The cement slab withstand the trail well and the temperature did not rise at all on the other side. Also, the location of the flame was barely visible. Our second experiment was a dropping test from 15 centimeters. The referential slab fell apart, it didn't pass the test. The wallpaper goo slab remained mostly intact, with only a larger piece falling off. The polystyrene slab behaved as expected and stayed intact. The cement slab passed the test well and stay in one piece. In our third experiment, we examined what happens when the samples are placed in water for two minutes. The reference slab was completely disintegrated in the water. The wallpaper adhesive slab was wet, but it was possible to remove it from the water in one piece. As expected, the polystyrene floated on the water and did not absorb any of it. The cement slab sunk immediately, but remained intact and only absorbed a little amount of water. Final results of the experiment showed that cements and wallpaper adhesive slabs were the best insulating materials that could be used in the construction industry. Here we are. Yes, we we are also seeing one of the the guys. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, okay, <laughs> Hello. So, uh, do you want to share 
any impression about the the work that you done because you you have uh, done a lot of uh, uh, test also of your product uh, now so i think it, it takes a lot of time so uh, yeah sure we did this uh, everything in i think five days so we did ah. everything in fast pace because it was a last minute call that we joined this competition However, uh, we think it was really enjoyable and we were kind of out of our comfort zones because we are an IT class. So it was kind of strange, but fun as well. And yeah, we choose the wood chip because it is a, there is so much and we don't use it. So we thought we could use something, we could use it for something. And this was our idea to use it for high heat isolation. Yeah, exactly. And do, you, do you plan uh, when you when you will be able to to live uh, in a house built uh, with uh, your materials? Uh, because we are in the final year of high school, it's <laughs> really hard to concentrate now for one project. But uh, for sure, we will try to do it uh, next summer. Now we yeah. have little time to. Yes. Oh, yes. So, uh, did you get uh, any support from uh, the teacher uh, from a university, or uh, did you do everything alone? Uh, well, in the translation, we got help, and uh, our teacher helped to write the project. However, we did everything by ourselves: uh, the building, the testing. Uh, we get the equipment, we build our own equipment, our homemade press machine. So yeah, mostly we did everything. Perfect, I think. Great. Do you have any other of your friends here or uh, connected or are you the only one that uh, are in charge to speak? <laughs> uh, yes, they are here, but uh, they don't really speak English. So uh, I am the uh, face of the team and they are the brain. OK, OK. So say congratulations to all the team. Thank you yes, so absolutely. OK, so thank you and keep going working in this way. OK, I think uh, the future could be good for you if you keep going to to use this effort kind of effort to to, to try to do something okay thank you so much so, thank you again to all of you okay thank you again now marco we are jump again in hungary uh, yes again in hungary okay recycling of plastic mm -hmm. and the usage of recycled plastic in 3D printing. Over 7 million tons of plastic are made in the world. Only a small percentage of this waste is recycled. The duration of decomposing of most plastics are unknown. Our goal is to reduce the world's carbon footprint, and that's why we encourage others to recycle and reuse scraps and fair 3D prints. Also, we inspire people to use 3D printing technology to gratify one's creativity. There are multiple 3D printing technologies available for our personal use. We used FDM, which is an additive production technology. It is used for making prototypes and creating diverse models. For the purposes of recycling the plastic called PLA, polyacid acid, proved to be the most efficient since it is a plant-based plastic. Faulty prints can be grinded into a small fragment, which can be put into an extruder device that makes the plastic into a filament again. Firstly, we have to design an object in our 3D modeling program. Secondly, we have to insert it into the slicing program and start printing. The glasses we made took almost two hours to print, but in the end it was perfectly usable. Another method for recycling PLA is through decomposing. In an industrial composter, it decomposes in one to three months. In the domestic conditions, it will take six months. ABS is the most used plastic in 3D printing. Its recycling procedure is the exact same as PLAs, although on a higher temperature. 
advanced 3D printer gurus recycle old ABS objects in the form of ABS glue. We made ABS glue as an experiment of our own. This glue is better than any other glue as it infuses objects rather than sticking them together. SLS or selective laser sintering is a 3D printing technology where an object is melted by sintering dust-like material in layers. After hardening one layer, the machine brings another thin layer of dust up to the object table and the laser solidifies the next layer. The plastic it uses is a so-called PA. If we want to reuse this plastic for a different purpose, we have to use a machine to grind the plastic into dust. We have to take into consideration that we can't use only recycled plastic, as it will not be as durable. Therefore, it has to be mixed with fresh plastic in a one-to-one -one ratio. Yes, also, also this group worked uh, in another aspect of a circular economy. Yes. I saw them wearing their own uh, glasses made by uh, 3D printer. Okay. Um, so, is there anybody of these uh, uh, boys or girls that worked on this project? Lily, I see Lily, I see Mark, and Mark. Uh, here we are. Uh, I am here, but uh, because of technical difficulties, I couldn't get my webcam going, but <laughs> okay. I'm here. Okay. So, ladies first, Lily, how was, it, how was to work on this project? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? What do you learn? Uh, uh, maybe me. maybe you, you have to switch on the um, the microphone. Ivan. Try again. Uh, my name is Ivan. If you ask me, I. Yes. Or, no, I, or are you asking Lily? No, I was asking Lily because uh, uh, I want to see a girl a voice. I want <laughs> to hear. Yeah. yeah, so I like it and uh, it took a long time. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it was very interesting. Um, <laughs> Okay, but uh, it's difficult for them to speak, to speak yes, uh, in English yes. and also online, I think. So anyway, uh, we appreciated the, your, uh, your work uh, and I think uh, it's uh, really important to, to redesign uh, um, also how our object uh, find a new way to use uh, also the whole object in in the future now otherwise we don't have the future <laughs> and which, which of the three technologies yeah, uh, you I, I i'm asking to mark or uh, or to um, or, or, or to your pal which is the most um, of the three technologies you show us uh, According to your op opinion, which is the most usable of the technologies? Which, uh, well, it's uh, quite in the difficult question, uh, as uh, these technologies are so diverse, so and has uh, different aspects to it. Um, uh, really, uh, if you think I mean, about it, uh, for recycling, for for, for the recycling, recycling, uh, for recycling which is the best uh, option. FFF for recycling, uh, FFF technology is the is the best uh, as uh, the the plastic we use is 100% uh, re uh, recyclable and reusable. As I said, uh, the SLS technology is uh, uh, has difficulties uh, as uh, the plastic it uses uh, PA uh, can be used 100% uh, again and. It's a difficult and uh, quite expensive process indeed. Okay, thank you okay. guys.
Thank, thank you very much, guys. Okay, and uh, con con congratulations also to your school. And now we have to go on because the time <laughs> is running, unfortunately, and we have only two hours of connection. <laughs> and congratulations, so, all, always congratulations to your teachers also. Uh, uh, one one uh, person in the chat say, can you guys send us your glasses? <laughs> well, uh, we can make more glasses, of course. Uh, just <laughs> send us an address and we send you glasses. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you. Thank you again. Uh, and okay. Bye. Thank Bye, guys. So much. Okay, now we have uh, um, the video prepared by a group of students from Italy, uh, followed by the Polytechnic of Milan. Uh, so the, the students are were not uh, able to be with us to, today, but uh, anyway, we have Cinzia. And so maybe she can say words after. But, but uh, now watch, we can watch the video. I geopolimeri sono catene o reti di molecole e di minerali collegate con legami covalenti, ottenute dalla composizione della polvere di un minerale alluminosilicato con una soluzione di un silicato alcalino. La loro composizione chimica è simile a quella dei minerali, si differenziano per la loro struttura morfa. Aggiungiamo una goccia di copamido. Cerchiamo la più piccola scaglietta di acido mieristico. Poi la pestiamo dentro al mortaio. Infine la aggiungiamo nel becker. Aggiungiamo poi 0,75 ml di acqua ossigenata. Infine aggiungiamo 14,25 ml di acqua. Successivamente, in un altro becker, andiamo a pesare i solidi. 2,25 g di King Dust. 6,75 g di cemento. Infine, 21 g di loppa, che è formata dai residui dell'acciaio. Aggiungiamo poi i liquidi ai solidi e li muscoliamo. Andiamo a mettere il composto lievitato in una sac à poche creata con il pollice di un guanto. La useremo per formare le palline di geopolimeri. Copriamo le palline di geopolimeri con il parafilm e le lasciamo a riposo per un giorno. Creiamo una soluzione di ferro nitrato. Pesiamo quindi 0,05 g di ferro nitrato e lo diluiamo in acqua distillata fino ad arrivare a 500 ml. Successivamente pesiamo 2 g di geopolimeri. Versiamo in un becker 50 ml della soluzione di ferro nitrato dove poi metteremo i geopolimeri. Attiviamo la piastra magnetica, che grazie a un'ancoretta magnetica presente sul fondo del becker farà girare la soluzione. Possiamo osservare che i geopolimeri assorbono il ferro presente nella soluzione e si possono utilizzare per assorbire i residui dei metalli pesanti da soluzioni acquose. So we don't have students in this time? No. Tizia, only uh, 30 seconds with you, <laughs> but do you want to share a comment Thanks. about yeah. the work uh, with this uh, student? Tizia is professor from uh, Polytechnic of Milan. Uh, this is a sample of the work that we made in one year. Uh, uh, students were uh, trained 
uh, of the topic and then they were left free to, to study and propose. And uh, this is a proposal because I, we asked them to face with our research, I'm working in that. And uh, they were very, very happy to, to do that. So at the end, this is one of the video. We are going to prepare two more for the next year and transform these two videos in toolkits. They are not here because they finished their career last July. So they are now uh, at the university. At the okay. University. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. I think uh, it's important uh, that also universities university is closed to schools uh, before that student uh, jump uh, into university. So thank you for uh, your commitment. Uh, okay. So thank you again. And now we jump uh, in Germany. <laughs> Again, we don't have uh, the student, but if we want, uh, we can uh, ask uh, a comment to Beate. Now we can watch the video. Hello, my name is Bianca. And my name is Mats. We are from the Gymnasium Ostertschambeck in Germany, and we are part of the Ironman Schools Club at our school. Our club is about creating a test kit with organic glue. When you order our test kit, the goal is to create a glue that perfectly seals the package. So far, we have found six organic glues that work. Our next step is to test the strength of the bond. This is one of our glues that is made out of gummy bear. And this is how it looks when two pieces of cardboard are glued together with it. We designed this machine to measure how strong uh, it is. So you fill it in here. Giovanna. We will tell you all details next year. Yes. We don't, we don't see the video. Uh, yes, because there is some problem. Mm, just a moment. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we have uh, seen Marco that uh, is doing sport uh, <laughs> in the in the sea. Eh? I think uh, is it you? <laughs> Okay, uh, Armida, if you want, I can uh, restart the video. But uh, no, I think uh, we it, it is late. We can uh, ask uh, simply a comment to Beate okay. and uh, keep uh, keep going. Okay, okay. Beate, yeah. if you want, uh, uh, I think uh, these are your student or yes. no? Yes. 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 Um, and maybe you've seen they just wanted to show an appetizer of their work because they are preparing the, um, I mean, the complete toolkit for uh, our next physical meeting. And then they want to show it, uh, uh, I mean, yeah. uh, completely and and the testing. And and I, I think it's uh, it's just great because uh, adhesive, adhesive bonding, so glues, seem to be a very uh, attractive topic, right? Because yeah. uh, today already several times we, we've heard about uh, adhesive bonding and I'm really happy about this. Yeah. And um, uh, I, um, uh, Gunnar, you know Gunnar, he is the teacher of uh, those students and he asked me to give all the best um, to all of you, to the whole consortium and to all ambassadors and congratulations from his side and he hope uh, he hopes to see us all together in Bologna next year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Beate. OK, and um, yes, uh, before that uh, people uh, start leaving the consortium, I want to to say that uh, uh, the event is on YouTube chat. YouTube channel. So please, uh, after this uh, um, meeting, uh, go in uh, our uh, uh, RMS School YouTube channel and click like <laughs> to this event so we can collect a lot of like because now it is important, okay, uh, also to have this uh, uh, social visibility. I don't know, okay. And uh, okay, now we can keep going with uh, um, another project uh, 
that was uh, uh, inserted in RM school, the talent RM school uh, project. So now, um, Beate, again, please, uh, if you want to say two words about uh, this uh, uh, initiative. Yes, thank you, uh, Amida. So the Talent RM at Schools project was in a sort a combination of a program we had already at the Fraunhofer Institute, which was called Talent School, and we combined it uh, in a way with RM at Schools and made it uh, or offered it on a uh, on an international level. So the program was the following. We invited uh, 16 students from Italy, Estonia, uh, Germany and Austria to Bremen in October 19, uh, not 19, <laughs> 2019. Yeah. 2019 for three days. Um, and they learned uh, on a theoretical and a practical basis a uh, lot about um, fiber reinforced material. They did lab work on, and so on. And uh, we had also eight teachers uh, with them in Bremen. And with the teachers, we also had workshops on composites, but also on project management. Because at the end of this workshop, um, the students got a task to fulfill, like we were the clients of the students and we asked them to produce with the knowledge they acquired during the workshop a biodegradable clipboard at home and then we wanted oh, in, at their schools of course and then we wanted them to come back to Bremen one um, uh, six months later to yeah now you see the group those are the the students the teachers and my colleagues and me of course and um we invited them to come back to germany in march to show their products and to um, explain their projects yes of course again uh, corona um, hit us hard so they couldn't come we had the school lockdown and honestly i was convinced that the students wouldn't be able to finish their their um, project but then at the beginning of november we had the so-called talent school finals and they handed in videos about their projects and i have to tell you when i when i watched them i cried <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. I got emotional because it was incredible. And now we have two uh, examples, I think, of the videos um, that we will show you about the work that the students have done. Yes, perfect. Thank you. So, Giovanna, please uh, go on with the first video that uh, uh, was realized by a group of uh, Italian uh, students from two different uh, cities, Casale Monferrato, and Milan. Number? Number uh, 11, I think. Okay. This. Yes.
Okay. Yes. Do we have some, uh, any of these students uh, here? Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, hello, congratulations again. Uh, we Thank know, we, we already know that we appreciated the, uh, your work. And so do you want to, to share with us uh, a comment? What did you learn? Uh, about the participation to this uh, pilot initiative? Um, I think that uh, the most important thing that we learned uh, is to uh, develop a project from the idea uh, to the realization uh, and um, even the economical study because we haven't did uh, anything similar before. Yes, yes, you're right. I think uh, it's uh, it's uh, something that usually is not considered, and so you know that uh, it's important. Uh, no? to to reach the market, uh, you have also to consider the business aspect. Otherwise, uh, you don't reach the market. You no, know? yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay. Uh, when your sample will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's difficult. We don't know <laughs> yet. <laughs> Marco, but you are terrible. You are I'm terrible. <laughs> working on it. Uh, sorry. Are you still working on it? Uh, mm, not now because uh, we are uh, in the lockdown yeah. now, and uh, we are in two different city, so it's difficult to, to um, organize. Yes. Let's but leave it like a as a purpose. Yes. Okay. In the future, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Ludovica, uh, where do you come from? Milan or Casal di Fernando? Uh, Milan. Uh, Milan. Okay. Anybody from Casal di Ferrato won't appear a moment on the screen? Also, to Chile from Milan. Hi. Uh, okay. okay. Oh. Yes. Uh, we would like to say thank you to IFAM Institute for this experience because we can uh, we could learn a lot, of course, from this project. Okay. So thank you. Uh, I think, uh, and, and please, I would like to thank you because really I was amazed when I saw that you really use the project management uh, instruments in such a nice way and I really I didn't really expect this to happen. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's amazing yes. and, and uh, just to tell all the others uh, this group uh, got the um, award best no the, an award in the category best entrepreneurial mindset. <laughs> Yes, exactly. They, they were the winner from this category. Okay, thank you again. And so, Giovanna, please show the other video from uh, realized by the Austrian uh, team. Because unfortunately, we are late. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our presentation. Have you wondered what would happen to the world if all fossil resources were consumed? No, we neither. But why, you may ask yourself. Because we came up with an idea to design an environmentally friendly and at the same time fossil resource saving material to demonstrate the properties of our newest development. We manufactured a simple but meaningful prototype, a clipboard. But this is not your normal go-to clipboard. This clipboard could actually save our planet. It is not only environmentally friendly and fossil resource saving, it is also designed to withstand extreme circumstances like heat and humidity. In addition to that, it is also able to handle heavy loads. How did we manage to pull that off? By doing a lot of research into fiber reinforced plastics, 
we concluded that this was the way to go. Based on that knowledge, we started producing prototypes. After carrying out a lot of tests and collecting data, we managed to evaluate the most promising solution, a sandwich. But not the sandwich you are thinking about, we are talking about sandwich construction and FRPs. We not only use cork, a regrowing raw material, we also recycle all cotton clothing, use it as a fiber, and combine it with a bio-based epoxy resin to design our new clipper. Here we are with our newest achievement. A sustainable, lightweight, technically usable, environmentally friendly, and extremely robust material. Because of its unique properties, this material is able to be modeled in all shapes and sizes, and therefore is usable in any imaginable way. The clipboard, not only an everyday object, but your contribution for a better tomorrow is now available online on our website for only 19.99 plus shipping. If you are interested in our material being used in your application, reach out to us and we will support you. Interested? Good. Let's head into a live presentation. Okay, actually this uh, group also developed another, another video that you can find on our YouTube channel where uh, it is very clear that they have constructed a prototype of this uh, clipboard. But unfortunately, for time time reason, we are not able to show also this, uh, this video. OK, Beate, if you want to say something and uh, also if you want to, uh, guys, uh, please uh, switch on the camera. Yes. Yeah. Just before the guys say something, uh, of course, they got the award in the category marketing. Hi. <laughs> Where are you? I, I can see you. Okay. There are also these three guys connected. Yes. Yes, and also the yes. teacher. Yes. Ah, okay. Regina. Yes, we are here. Hi. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi. Is it a perfect? Hi. A perfect job, not only for the job itself, but also for the presentation. And uh, I appreciate it so much. The end of the presentation, uh, I remember everybody. Uh, it's better to leave uh, the way to be contacted. And uh, I appreciate it so much to invite everybody and uh, to share your passion and your uh, commitment in this project. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, guys, do you want to say something? Okay, uh, unfortunately we are late, so uh, I'm sorry that many people are leaving, but okay, thank you for, uh, to, yeah, for your participation at least uh, up to now. But please, now we want to, to listen to words uh, from these uh, guys, no? Uh, what did you learn? Yeah, about this experience, guys. Well, we learned one uh, one very important thing. Sustainable is very expensive. <laughs> so when building a material, you have basically three different variables you have to take into account. So there is costs, there is mechanical stability, and of course, sustainability. And once you achieve two good results in two variables, you have no way to get a good result in the third variable. So if you have a material which is sustainable and also mechanical good properties, um, it will be very expensive. Yeah. So there is a not, uh, there has to be a lot of research done in the future to make these three variables uh, combinable in each one material. I think we are absolutely agree with you and uh, this is an important aspect uh, to take into account uh, now when you speak about sustainability there is a lot of research at the base in the background to be really sustainable in something yes and Regina the teacher do you want to say something 
Um, thank you and hello from Austria. Um, I have to say that my students worked really well. They did everything on their own. They just uh, needed some encouragement to get everything on time. And I'm so proud of such a mature and technically so um, advanced project. And thank you for the opportunity that we have this platform to present the students of our school, which is a technical school, obviously, but um, I really appreciate it. And for me as an English teacher, also that they managed so well to um, send their message across. Thank yes, you. Abso absolutely. We have also to say thank, thank you to all the students that try to speak uh, well English and try to explain also the scientific point of view. I think uh, it's a really a great uh, job eh, from uh, all of you. OK, so thank you again, Re Regina. Beate, do you want to conclude this uh, uh, part with uh, something? Okay. See you. See you next year, hopefully in Bremen. Okay, but they we, they they were the winner of what? Oh yeah, I, 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 I think I said it already. They were the winner. First of all, they got the marketing at, award, but then they got an extra award after we uh, saw the the presentation of the product they described in in the other presentation. They got an an special extra award the techno technology award yeah 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 they are the the engineering of the future absolutely right. <laughs> so okay okay thank you thank you again to hold this group okay thank you so now marco <laughs> school company reborn from english language school jail milev yes we have we have the Yes, we have the connection with another uh, huge program, um, the Junior Achievement Program. And so now we are going to see the, uh, the video realized by a, a group from Bulgaria. Let's yes. See. Hugo Ivan has been operating since the beginning of the 2019-2020 academic school year. It was established with 16 members for all students from English language school, Geomis and Bukas, where entrepreneurship is not a subject from the school's curriculum. This is first of us, young entrepreneurs from Bukas born to make to make a service, a team to possess, uh, to make profit, uh, and develop a new business idea for Mixtopia and win the special prize of the EIT promotive uh, of the uh, Rising Stars 2020 competition organized uh, by Junior Achievement Company. Company Mebron consists of me, Tina Gernenkova, as a president. The vice presidents are Alex Shelaskov and Alexander Ivanov. Irene Shell is uh, a head of our management department. We took part in many financing innovative food games, entrepreneurial events, and conferences in which we qualified among the best food companies in the country. Here, we will work again for the implementation of our ideas, and we can't wait to showcase and to applicate what we have learned in the field of entrepreneurship and finance innovations. A product that is called Greenhouse for Urban Agriculture that is made out of recycled plastic bottles that are constructed together, and it got us to the finals of the Rising Stars 2020 competition organized by Junior Team in Bulgaria, and actually we won the EIT Raw Materials Grand Prize from that competition. We conducted a marketing research which illustrated the profile of our clients and their primary needs and at what cost are they willing to pay for it? The survey's data showed people from Bulgaria and from other European countries. Those people were from different backgrounds. Although we now change the name to Green Reward, we will continue to support our and products that are different and green, just as our needs and make other products that are social and environmentally 
and can participate in a lot of other organized hygiene I hope you all promote our company in what we strive for and work with our focus group. We can't wait to see you in Bologna again. Yes. Okay. Is there any of the hello. any student? Okay. Hello. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Okay. Hi. So, uh, how was uh, uh, your emotion when you were declared uh, that we, you were the winner of this competition in Junior Achievement? We were yeah. really excited about uh, like, everything. It was overwhelming to know that we have such opportunity to present our ideas um, at such a high level conference as this event is. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I'm going to confirm what Alexander says. And uh, actually, we got invited to do um, TV interviews later. And um, we were actually praised by a lot of prominent entrepreneurs in Bulgaria and abroad. So it was great. Yeah. Wow. But uh, how old are you? <laughs> you are so young, but you are already launched <laughs> in the business. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> we, we are different ages. Uh, for example, me and Berlin are 18 and Alexander and Tina are 17. So we have uh, younger uh, people from our school company as well. Uh, but yeah, we are very diverse. We're very in age. We are mostly, uh, we're all high school um, students. So yeah, we're very young. Yes, you are, but you, you are, uh, okay, young, but uh, uh, a little bit expert, no? <laughs> so, so it's good. Marco, do you want to so, yeah. ask something, you know, because yes, or uh, the microphone. Who among you guys think uh, he will become uh, an environmental friend entrepreneur in the future? Well, yes, actually, we are very interested in environmentally friendly entrepreneurship. And last year, it was uh, our main goal, our main topic. We worked in that direction, direction the most. And uh, this year we are again doing um, green, uh, we're actually changed our name to Green Reborn and we are yet again doing uh, green um, projects as well as we have started a new kind of chapter of our uh, school company life which is directed into social entrepreneurship and we cannot wait to start doing projects and uh, bringing ideas into life that actually mix the two, environmentally friendly and social. Thank so yes, energy and we are with your enthusiasm, you will uh, achieve uh, what uh, what uh, what is your goal and what your aim is for. My best company. Thank you. Thank you so company. much. Thank you. Armida, I'm afraid you also forget uh, your mic uh, off. Okay, <laughs> it's my turn not to forget the microphone. It's, uh, but but I'm Italian, so I speak also with my hand, you know, by using my hand. But anyway, sure. congratulations also from all the, the consortium of RM School. Okay, so keep going with this enthusiasm. Okay, thank so thank you. Really appreciate yes, um, Marco, we have uh, finished the, the session uh, of the presentation of uh, a student, uh, realized by student. I'm, uh, I, I say hello to everybody. I, am, I appreciate very much uh, to be involved in this project. Uh, and uh, it was an opportunity for me to see 
all uh, the face of these guys and uh, it, it warm my heart for the future. And also, I know that uh, I know perfectly that behind these faces there's uh, uh, effort, there is uh, stamina, there is uh, uh, a strong will, and also there are uh, some uh, enlightened. So thank you very much to everybody, guys. Uh, okay. All the best for your future. Okay, Marco, thank you again for joining us and for your precious support and uh, bye bye. Okay, keep in contact okay, but uh, okay you. the other don't leave the event because it's not finished so thank you again marco now we have a competition eh, with the kahoot by using kahoot so this, this uh, competition uh, was organized by our uh, colleague and friends in madrid so i ask them to appear on the screen, Miguel, David, and to to start explaining what we have to do. Morning. Okay. Who is speaking? <laughs> Miguel. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Miguel. Okay. Good morning. Uh, yes, I I don't see you, but maybe the other yeah, can see you. Yeah. Uh, just one moment. Uh... Ah, okay, okay. Ah. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay Hola, Miguel. <laughs> okay. Um, so start immediately with the code because uh, we are late, unfortunately. Okay. Yes. So first of all, well, you have to launch the Kahoot uh, and you have to, to share the, the screen. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And they have to, all the participants, they want to play, but they have to do is uh, insert in Kahoot. I will put in the chat the the well the link where okay. they have to go. If they have played, they they will know where to go. Okay. And they have to and they have to put that uh, code. Okay. okay. I I see that there are some that they already know how to. But. Yes, but uh, I will put in the chat. I yes, yes, link. yes. I'm. I. So, I need an help <laughs> from you. <laughs> because I, I know that there are some that they already know how to. So just a moment, that it's. It's sinking. So just one moment. Okay, now. You see the my desktop with the pin of Kahoot. Okay. So we have to be linked to the the link uh, yes. w point Kahoot and it. Okay. Do you see the link in the chat? Okay. So for the Mm -hmm. Students that they haven't played before, they have to to enter in that link, and they will ask for a code. That the code is that one, the game pin, that is one hundred sixty-six ninety-four. And if they can put their uh, uh, the name of the students because then afterwards uh, for the winners we will give a prize so in that way we can identify them or if not if they win or something like that then they can uh, maybe write us or something like that so we know who are for them yes yes absolutely and then i will just yes, explain a little bit how it works for the people that they haven't used Kahoot before. So it, they can connect from, it doesn't mind if it's the mobile phone or from the computer. Uh, they have to, well, when we click start, there will be like a questionnaire with, uh, in total I think there are nine questions. Uh, they are very short questions and then you will have like four uh, different answers. 
uh, you can see the well you will see the answers and the question in in the team in here with the screen and then in your device in your electronic device you will have to uh, click the answer that you you think that is the the correct answer but in your mobile phone you just will see like four different colors yeah you will see green blue yellow and red you won't see either the the question and not the answers. So you will have to look also to the to the screen to know the the, the questions. Usually they they are the questions they are like you have 30 seconds for to answer and I think that maybe there are some of them that they are very easy and very fast that maybe you will have 20 seconds. So you won't have too many times to to try to look to another in another place. So yes. And I think that, that that's it more or less we can yes. wait a little bit yes the people are going to to join uh, kaut so may, maybe it's better to to wait uh, another yes. 30 minutes so how yes. is the situation in madrid at the moment <laughs> well it's a little bit better than some weeks ago so but Yes, it's a little bit crazy sometimes with what well, mm. I think like like everybody like mm. trying to cheat. We have some people coming, but other online. So what well, mm. we are the, doing? Yes, but the, the school are open or not? Not. Uh, they are like it depends, but some, it's like middle on middle. They go oh. maybe two or three days to the schools and then the other two or three days. Okay. Yes, they mix, mix it mixed the model we can say okay i think uh yeah. we don't have a more uh subscription no okay no uh, yes but i think we can start miguel okay perfect okay so, i start uh, the uh, game second. yeah go Okay, so we start. First question. This was well, quite, well, quite easy, quite easy at the well, moment. There are, some people <laughs> that they are still, they don't know where, where we are. Yeah, yes, yes, perfect. Okay, so we can continue. And also you have to be like a little bit fast because if not, I see that there are some people that haven't answered. So you have like 20, 30 seconds mm -hmm. to answer. They have to, to to follow my initial presentation. This is a test. <laughs> they have listened to me. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> Great. Right. Uh, I think that they they heard you. Some some people they they were attending. Yes. Okay. How many critical raw materials have the EU identified? Mm, this is not easy, eh? Because every every uh, three years uh, change uh, the list yeah. of the critical raw materials, no? So <laughs> it's not so easy, this question, eh? Oh, yeah. Yes, they uh, they are thirty with the heavy well they were like introducing four one. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but because this is uh, difficult because uh, uh, sometimes in the list are considered one uh, uh, raw material, yes, but it's a yes. block of uh, a, a group of uh, critical yes, raw material. Yes, the yes. with metals and also the rare earth uh, yes. elements, they are uh, put in the same group, so yes, sometimes. Yes, uh, so Miguel, you are terrible huh, with this <laughs> question. <laughs> Go on. Which property is not necessary for a raw material to be considered? Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, here uh, uh, also me I was wrong because I not read that is not necessary. <laughs> I I I read only is necessary. So, oh yes, I know. And mm, Miguel. <laughs> uh, it's, yes, it's sometimes it's just for the people to know. But yes, that's why I was putting in uppercase. Okay. Okay, more or less. So they have a, a very high level of purity, eh? Okay, the silicon. Otherwise, uh, they don't conduct they, uh, the electricity. less electricity. Yes. Alex, congratulations. <laughs> We don't have a uh, uh, hundred hour eyes uh, the the periodic table. Otherwise, <laughs> it is it it's simple to answer. But no, but this even is... if you have the even if you have the periodic table, oh, you have to know. <gasps> okay, nice. Okay. This is one of nice. the groups that they have. Oh. Critical raw materials that they are grouped in just one one category. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rare earth element. Well, also this is not so easy, eh? If you that's right. <laughs> I, I think that uh, we have a lot of distribution in the answer. We will see what happened. I'm curious. Oh, <laughs> yes, I know. It's usually people listening that is like that. So if they want, they can go to our seminar during the evening and we will explain. That yes, exactly. exactly. The, during this uh, afternoon no you are uh, going to 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 give a, a webinar no yeah so you so yes we will explain these kind of things mm -hmm. so we have Not the last three one Also, this is not easy, eh? Miguel. <laughs> you are terrible, <laughs> really. Right. Eh? Well, you want to do all of our students to follow your webinar, I think. <laughs> oh, but look, there are 
many people that I have answered well. Yeah, so hey, that, that, that's why they are trying trying to use for electrical batteries right now, also for active carbon. That's because of the properties of the mm -hmm. of the natural gas. Okay. Oh, but they, they are doing well. They're doing fine. Okay, we have a change in the liter. Rubber. Mm. Also, natural rubber is a critical yes. raw material. There are some also biological materials that they analyze the criticity. Okay. Okay. This is one I, an easy one. Good. <laughs> and I think it's going to be the last one. Next question. And we will see the winners. Yes, the last question is it's, not. It's not, uh, it's not related with the more circular economy. Hmm. <laughs> there is a little, little bit of distribution, eh? yeah. <laughs> but I think it's, it's not easy in a, a, a very short time. Uh, yeah, yeah to not, not to be wrong in reading your terrible question, Miguel. <laughs> OK, yes. so who is the winner? The... So we have the third one. We have the second one and the chance. Champion no. FRP. Oh. Okay. So I think that they can. Okay. I, I, it's me. No, I don't want to be <laughs> to be the winner. <laughs> I want. I only was. I have, I have fun to 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 play. You know. So okay. con consider the the other. No. Okay. I, I want to. I want to. To see the also the face of this uh, winner, also the the the, the first uh, position. Who, who was at the first position? I, yes. I from from Austria. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, you take my place absolutely. <laughs> and the other two, please uh, turn on the camera. Ah, but Austria, okay, but it's your your team again, the winner. No. <laughs> they study. <laughs> they study a lot. <laughs> okay. So, um, so we are going to send you a, a small uh, gift, okay, for this, uh, um, for this uh, competition. So please uh, write. Uh, Write me your uh, address, uh, the, the school address. Okay, so we are able to send you something for this competition. Okay, guys. Yes, I think, uh, Miguel, thank you so much uh, for also for the time that you spend in preparing uh, this Kahoot. Um, yes, to do this online is not the same like to to have the Kahoot in the presence, but anyway, <laughs> it's something. So now before leaving, please uh, switch on all the camera. So we want to take uh, the, the screenshot of uh, of the video now. Uh, and uh, uh, if you if, if you have time, please follow the, our activities during this afternoon and uh, tomorrow afternoon. And Again, I thank uh, thank all the consortium for the availability in preparing these activities. And uh, please, other camera. Okay. <laughs> we want to take a very nice picture. Yes, um, uh, I know that you 
all of you ha have to attend other lessons, so I'm sorry that we have a little bit late, but also for us it was the first time. It's not easy to respect the time. OK, so uh, thank you again. Uh, and uh, OK, join our activities in uh, uh, during this afternoon and uh, we hope to 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 be all together the next year in presence uh, in Italy, in Bologna, eh? because uh, it's nice to, to see you, but it's another thing to stay together. And OK, so thank you. Thank you again to all of you. OK. Thank you. Big kiss from Italy. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.